Hey guys, it's Mark. I, uh, I hope those uh, stories of uh, how I became a copywriter um, and kind of learned the creative process and kind of went from you know not knowing anything to, to growing uh, were helpful. Um, but I also uh, didn't just stop with copywriting. I also got into art and music, uh, although later in life um, than, than a lot of people. And not only was I able to use the creative process to help me, but I was also able to see the commonalities between the different disciplines or the forms of creative expression. So I wanted to share a few more stories about my art and my music uh, paths to, uh, to help, um, help you guys see that as well. So the first set of stories I'd like to talk about are how I became an artist or a painter. Uh, I wore my black turtleneck to uh, appear brooding and dark and, you know, just for the occasion. Um, but really, you know, I mentioned I, I got started in copywriting in fifth grade. I didn't get started with art until I graduated from the University of Washington. Um, I just didn't think I had the talent or the capability uh, to be able to do anything. So it just wasn't something I ever looked into. Um, but I remember, I mean, I can't remember exactly why, but I remember running across this book, uh, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. And I remember being struck by the title thinking, being a left brain person, I'm like, I could do this. There's something about the idea that I could learn this as opposed to having talent. And so sure enough, I, I did the exercises. I highly recommend this book because it definitely changed my life and my trajectory. During that same time, I remember, you know, one of the other reasons why I never got into art was because it never inspired me. Um, I just remember thinking the museums I'd gone to when I was a kid were kind of boring and, 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 and uh, dark. And, um, and pictures in the books just really weren't that interesting. I just, I just didn't get it. Uh, and um, all that changed when I had an opportunity to go to Europe. Uh, I was able to go to Amsterdam in particular, and I remember going into the Van Gogh Museum. And I just remember walking up the stairs, and when I got there, just like all the paintings, it was like they were lit from inside. They were like on. The whole room it just felt like the colors were so stunning and vibrant. It just felt like the whole room was alive. And I fell in love with painting and wanted to paint right there and then. So I not only got to see the Van Gogh Museum, but I also got to see uh, the Musée d'Orsay in Paris and the René Sophia in, uh, in Madrid. Uh, and it, and it, was def it was pretty clear that I was really into, um, you know, kind of Impressionism, Post-Impressionism, abstract, um, you know, anything really colorful uh, or suggestive, uh, as you can kind of tell by my style. Um, and so when I got back from Europe, I was, I was kind of just really on a mission. And so I went to the University of Washington uh, library to try to find a book on color uh, because that was really what I was, found myself passionate about. And uh, I remember coming across um, this book title uh, and this book without the book jacket, uh, The Art of Color by Johannes Itten. And you know the title just struck me. And so, um, so I had to check it out. So this next story is probably one of my proudest and most embarrassing at the same time, because uh, I mentioned this book, The Art of Color. Uh, this was a left brain person's dream. Um, it has so much information about color. I had no idea how dynamic color was, how um, much, you know, you, need, it, you don't need to know, but, but uh, you can know. And uh, I really wanted to learn as much about it as possible. But I couldn't afford this book. Uh, it was not, I couldn't check it out from the library. They wouldn't let you check it out. And it was $80 at the time. And so I literally photocopied the pages in black and white. And I bought a cheap set of paint to mix the colors to recreate some of the exercises so I could learn that way. So proud because it was diligent, embarrassed because that's pretty um, geeky. I kind of remembered that you know when I back when we were given crayons and you know try and draw in lines try and stay in lines I'd make a mistake and now the thing doesn't look very good and so that's probably another judgment against don't don't have the talent um, but you couldn't erase the crayon right it was it, once it was over that line it was over that line uh, so and I wasn't somebody who was like cool and, and experimental and was trying to go outside the lines because that's cool uh, I was trying to you know do you know follow the rules I guess you might say but um, that idea of being able to erase was really appealing. And when it came to paint, uh, my only experiences were with watercolors when I was a kid and you couldn't do that either. Everything started to kind of like turn muddy pretty quickly. Um, so when I discovered acrylics, I realized that, that after they dry, you could cover them. 
And so effectively, you can erase, you could start over, you could do over. That changed my life. So those are probably the biggest milestones uh, that kind of guided me to feel like I could be an artist, I could learn how to draw, I could learn how to understand color, I could learn materials and how to paint. Um, I had the opportunity to work for a, a company called Daniel Smith uh, for a time while I was a freelance writer and uh, I had access to this library of books and, and I learned about contrast and composition and all sorts of things that really appeal to the left brain, but, uh, but I don't want it to sound like art is only a left brain thing because it obviously is not. Um, the doing is what, you know, over time and learning from what I was doing and accessing, uh, you know, my inspiration, those were the things that kind of bring out the art uh, after you understand technique and materials, etc. cetera. So, um, you know, I don't want to feel like this is an intellectual exercise, but it's definitely something that you can start with from your left brain and move into uh, as well.